I'll be honest with you, I really tried preparing a normal, cohesive, coherent idea, but I am totally overwhelmed with hundreds of thousands of thoughts on this. Uh, so I guess let's just start and see where this takes us. Uh, this week's Parsha uh, discusses uh, an incident between Yaakov and Esav. Esav comes in from hunting and sees that Yaakov is making a lentil soup. And he barters with Yaakov for this lentil soup. So the question is, why was he making lentil soup? And Rashi explains that Yaakov's father, Yitzhak, was mourning the loss of his father, Avraham. See, Avraham died a few years before his time, Rashi explains. And the reason is, is because God didn't want Avraham to experience the pain of seeing the path that Esav went down. And nobody else died. It was just Avraham at that point. So it seems that Yitzhak was supposed to be around to experience the pain, though he didn't due to a bunch of different things. And Esav being a bit of a con artist to his father. Um, Rivka had to experience pain. Yaakov definitely had to experience pain. But he decided to save that one person. Um, from pain. So we know that God takes into accounting who suffers and who doesn't and has has different levels of suffering. Each person gets allotted the amount of suffering that they are supposed to receive. So this past week we uh, as a Jewish nation experienced an incredibly painful tragedy. Um, Yoshua Rafal Halevi um, Shua Polanski, the husband of Simi Polanski, one of the owners of the frock, uh, passed away at the young age of 31 years old. And when I was reading the Parsha, it hit me that this week it makes so much sense for us to be reading this because, I mean, naturally, the people close to Shua, Shua's wife, Shua's family, Shua's friends, of course they're experiencing pain, but Thousands of us, possibly tens of thousands of us, are experiencing some sort of mourning, some sort of degree of of pain and suffering from this. I, I didn't know Shua from anything. And suddenly I see uh, posts on Instagram or posts on Facebook, taking challah for Yeshua Rafael HaLevi. Uh, please say a parak up to hell for Yeshua Rafal Alevi. And I'm seeing this name, and I'm seeing this name, and I'm seeing this name, and then there's a YouTube clip of Jimmy Fallon visiting someone in the hospital, and the name looks familiar, and then I see Simi in the video, and my heart sinks, because I realize that this Yeshua Rafal Alevi is Simi's husband. And do I know Simi either? No. I know her from Instagram. Does that mean we have a relationship? No. I, I, I really maybe wouldn't recognize her if I was walking down the street. But for some reason, the entire Jewish world joined together in an act of, of unity, in an act of prayer, in an act of good deeds to, to try and, and save this holy soul. And I saw someone post um, last week, you know, if anyone who is going to take challah, you know, Baruch Dayan Amis, blessed be the true judge, um, Yeshua Rafal Halevi has passed away, and I felt this pit in my stomach. And and I heard something in the back of my head, like, you didn't even know him. Like, do you have a right to feel this pain? Like, do you have the right to mourn this loss? And I don't know. I don't know, but I do. And God gave tens of thousands of us this pain um, because I guess we're meant to have it. And we're supposed to learn something from it and we're supposed to do something about it. So just a few things that I've learned from, from Shua and from Simi during this time is number one, Simi's incredible, incredible faith in God. I've seen all of her posts on Instagram. I've read them and I'm just in awe and in shock of, of how positive she was during, during Shua's stay in the hospital. And I've had some restored faith in humanity and faith in the Jewish people, like people from all over the world, you know, posting. There were almost 600 
public posts, ones that I could see, of using the hashtag shoe is strong or semi strong, people showing solidarity and people showing their care and their concern for people that they maybe knew and maybe they didn't. So I guess what we can take from this is any amount of pain and suffering that we feel is a wake up call for each and every single one of us. And perhaps the unity that we had praying for Shua is something that God wants us to have all the time. May we continue to have this unity. May we continue to storm the heavens for Mashiach, for our salvation. And may the Shabbos be a Shabbos of comfort to Simi and Simi's family and all close to Shua. And may we see the Yeshua. May we see the salvation soon in our days.